Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Sara and I am a clinical embryologist. In this video, we will be going over what is the difference between IVF and ICSI. So the format of this video is going to be as follows. Firstly, we will go over what exactly is IVF. Secondly, we will go over what is the difference between IVF and ICSI. This will be followed by what are the indications for performing IVF and what are the indications for performing ICSI. Lastly, we'll go over how do the success rates compare between IVF and ICSI. Without further ado, let's begin. So what exactly is IVF? IVF stands for in vitro fertilization. The word in vitro means in glass. Essentially, fertilization that takes place outside of the human body in a glass laboratory dish is called IVF or in vitro fertilization. So overall, the process of combining male and female gametes form embryos in a laboratory setting is called IVF or in vitro fertilization. Now, to achieve fertilization as part of the process of IVF, two techniques are used. First, being conventional IVF. Second, being ICSI, which is short for intercytoplasmic sperm injection. Now that we understand what IVF is, let's take a look at what exactly is conventional IVF then. Conventional IVF or classical IVF is a technique used to achieve fertilization. In conventional IVF, oocytes or eggs are contained in a special dish containing special media and sperms are basically introduced to the oocytes to achieve fertilization. So this process is called conventional IVF. To further simplify this, the process of introducing sperm to the egg to achieve fertilization is called conventional IVF or classical IVF. Now, so coming on ICSI. So what is ICSI? ICSI stands for intercytoplasmic sperm injection. And this is a process which makes use of a specialized equipment called a micromanipulator. A micromanipulator allows us to select a single sperm and directly deposit it inside an egg. This is done with the help of tools such as a holding pipette, which allows us to hold the oocyte in position, and an injection pipette, which allows the deposition of sperm directly in the oocyte. This process is called ICSI or intercytoplasmic sperm injection. Now that we know what is the difference between conventional IVF and ICSI, let's have a look at what are the indications for performing conventional IVF and what are the indications for performing ICSI. Conventional IVF is indicated in the absence of male factor infertility, meaning that the male partner has normal semen parameters. With this condition in mind, Conventional IVF can therefore be utilized in cases of tubal factor, such as blocked fallopian tubes, in cases of unexplained infertility, in cases of endometriosis, and in cases where previous attempt of taking ovulation induction has proved to be unsuccessful. So when is ICSI indicated? ICSI is indicated in cases of male factor infertility, meaning that the male partner has either low sperm count, low sperm morphology, or low sperm motility. ICSI is also recommended when the sperms are retrieved surgically, either through the epididymis or the testes of a male. ICSI is also the preferred method when in a previous IVF cycle using conventional IVF led to either no fertilization or very poor fertilization. Thus, in such a case, ICSI is well indicated. Moving forward, we're now coming on success rates. So how do the success rates compare between IVF and ICSI? So by success rates, I will be referring to as live birth rates achieved with each method, that is IVF and ICSI. Essentially, the live birth rates between the two methods are comparable and there is no significant difference when it comes to live birth rates achieved between IVF and ICSI. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful and now you can differentiate between IVF and ICSI. If so, do consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel for similar content. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.